today's pick a card reading. I'm going to try to do my best to keep the energy light, you guys. Today's topic is a pretty, I want to say a heavier topic, let's be honest. Um, I realize now, at the point that I'm filming the video, I don't 100% know what title I want to put on this video, but the concept behind this video is exploring life after trauma. It is a heavier topic, but it is a topic that's pretty dear to me personally, and it was a creative concept constructed by beautiful Donna Hawthorne. Um, she and I have collaborated in the past. When she approached me with this idea, I just thought, my gosh, it's something that certainly first of all would be very helpful and second of all not a lot of people like to address at least on bigger sort of platforms because it can be very specific it can be very triggering and the idea behind our readings is we want to offer hope we want to illuminate that path after healing life after trauma what does your healing journey look like moving forward so i have i'm going to be honest with you guys i delayed filming this because in my head I wanted it to follow a certain theme that was going to be helpful. We don't want to just open old wounds that you've already started to heal. I really delayed filming and I even just this morning I had to watch Donna's video again. Bless her for being so organized, so grateful. Um, and yeah, I think the way that I want to approach this topic for us is we're going to be looking at your healing journey. We're going to be looking at the positives. We're going to be looking at what you have to look forward to, what are some of the issues you may overcome, and more more focusing on your life moving forward, basically. So you may approach this as a predictions reading. Um, if you were to do this, if you were to address that, if you were to walk away from this, what would happen but essentially the concept is your life after trauma what does your healing journey look like now today's video in collaboration with donna is also a giveaway there's a few things that i want to talk about with the giveaway um first of all the giveaway will include two decks that donna has made um and we will also be including a crystal pack as well so the crystal pack is put together by a beautiful fellow Australian. Um, she's actually, gosh, it's been a difficult couple of years, let's be real, with coronavirus and just, I don't know if I'm even allowed to say that word, but um, she's someone who I'm more than happy to be able to support as well. And I will show you them because I've got them just sitting over here. I changed um, the filler because they're basically ready to be shipped so I've just got some packing filler in there but we've got these beautiful raw crystals now I'm not the best with crystals if you know me you would know that um, but I can see sodalite I can see a ventrine I can see some clear quartz some citrine some black tourmaline some rose quartz it's just this one that I'm not too sure about I'm not too sure what this one is because they're all raw it's kind of difficult for me to understand what that one is but each of these is basically a starter pack there'll be two of them as well as Donna's two decks um, and the idea is it's something that can kickstart your healing or, or at least renew your healing if you've been healing for some time. Now just quickly about the decks, they are both centered around healing, they're both spirituality decks, um, however the winner will be getting one or the other, it's sort of like a random pick and mix and I do want to just say that this one is a biblical themed tarot deck so if you are not comfortable with um, biblical themes, I would recommend that you let me know before I ship this out to you, basically. If you are interested in entering the giveaway, to do that, there'll be information down below. I feel like I've made this intro long enough already. Um, more information about the giveaway will also be on the community section of my um, channel, and you can find it on Donna's as well. We've been very careful to make sure that we're sharing the same information so that um, nothing is confusing. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to email me. The giveaway will only run for a week, so you have until next week, Tuesday, to enter. But again, all information about the giveaway is down below. Oh gosh, that, I feel like that's one of the longest readings, excuse me, intros that I've done in a while. But anyway, coming back to the reading itself. So we have three groups as usual. I'm going to be going left to right, okay? So group one, you guys have the Amazonite crystal today. They're all kind of palm stones. That was my goal. Group two, you guys have the Labradorite 
palm stone today. This one, in certain lights, it looks as they do. It's the nature of Labradorite. It looks more blue in certain lights. And group three, you guys have the zebra palm stone. Zebra agate? I don't know. I don't know, Kate. This is from Raw and Rituals. I'm pretty sure it's a zebra palm stone. I'm terrible. So those are the three groups. We're going to be looking at your healing journey moving forward, um, what you can expect, what you may need to focus on, and where to next, basically. I'm hoping that this reading will offer you clarity. I do recommend that you have a notebook if it's helpful for you to journal or scribble or just something to kind of squeeze, you know, like a fluffy toy or a pillow, um, just in case the things start to get re-triggered. That's not my aim, but these things do happen. So get a drink of water, get a cup of tea, and let's get into your reading. Okay, so group one, if you chose the Amazonite crystal, then this is going to be your reading. Now today's video is looking at your healing journey. What can you expect moving forward? I hope I didn't butcher this topic in the intro too much. Um, I wanted to kind of finesse the theme just so that it could apply to most of you. I don't want to, you know, you'll know as an individual whether you have experienced um, some distressing themes in your life or whether you feel that you've been through trauma. Um, that's not my place to label and judge, but the, te the main theme of this video is just looking at um, your healing. I feel like I'm trying to be too PC and it's really <laughs> stitching me up because I want to make sure that culturally I'm also being appropriate as well. That's the thing about having an online presence. What I might say in certain one country could be offensive in another, so I don't mean to step on anybody's toes, but we're going to be focusing on your healing journey moving forward. Now, I want to start with tarot. I do have an arrangement of oracle decks over here that I would love to use as well, um, but we're going to start with tarot for you, group one. Your healing journey. What do you need to know about your healing journey moving forward? We're being shown the Wheel of Fortune reversed, okay. What do you need to know about your healing journey moving forward? Group 1, please, Spirit. We're being shown the High Priestess in the reverse. And we're also being shown the Five of Swords in the reverse, okay. What does Group 1 need to know about their healing journey moving forward, Spirit? They're showing me temperance. It didn't really come out, but it's so colorful. I kind of want to keep it. <laughs> you know, we're looking at a lot of gray and black and white over here. And then we've got the beautiful colored temperance coming out. Can I get one more card for the top row, please, Spirit? Group one. What can they expect in their healing journey? Okay. And you also have the nine of pentacles coming out as well. Okay, so group one, I don't know if I want to clarify yet. Let's lay those down. I'm going to grab some flower agate. So what I can see here, you guys, I don't know why I laid them out that way because <laughs> it should be left to right, but I guess we're going right to left today. It's interesting with you guys, group one. I want to say that your healing journey does involve you sort of slowing things down for right here, right now. Moving forward, I do see a change of events leading to you kind of needing to ground yourself. I feel like it would be really best for you guys to start small. Um, your root chakra and Archangel Michael are really coming to the forefront of my mind, group one. It feels like things for you, especially when you were younger, were very much out of your control. It feels like your healing journey involves you constantly needing to remind your mind that you are safe and you kind of need to feel safe in your circumstances as well. If you share your life with anybody, you know, if we're looking at someone as um, a partner or a friend who you spend a lot of time with or a housemate who you're living with, it feels like you need to constantly be reminded that you are safe and that certain things do trigger um, anxious feelings. I feel like there's a feeling here of needing security around you, um, needing to feel, I, I just keep hearing safe if I'm honest and I feel like I'm just repeating the same thing, the same themes, um, but there is a feeling here of reconciling your energy with temperance reversed and bringing things into balance internally. Temperance over here is a beautiful, beautiful card, um, but when it's reversed, it does talk about things feeling discombobulated, you know, feeling like everything's in the air or like we have this fight or flight response to our situation. 
I feel like a lot of your healing journey involves you being kind to yourself as you slowly start to discover your triggers. Because I feel like as you grow and as you age and as you interact with new people, your triggers may develop and change as well. Um, especially if you're someone who identifies as an anxious person with that fight or flight fear or trigger or feeling. Um, I feel like you may be fine for a long period of time and then all of a sudden you're in a shopping center one day and you can't breathe, right? And it starts to become an overwhelming feeling and you don't know where it came from, but you just, to avoid that from happening again, you try to avoid going shopping and you try to avoid going to large shopping centers or crowds anymore. It feels like um, your healing journey involves you needing to be patient with yourself as your triggers change um, and as they manifest from the same core issue, but just in different sort of symptoms. It feels like many of you may feel um, lightheaded or that may be a very physical response to what you could have been through. Overall, I see that in any relationship or anybody who shares a lot of time with you, group one, you do need to feel safe. You need to feel like, um, one, they're not just going to abandon you with the nine of pentacles reversed. I feel like you're someone who could have codependent tendencies in a relationship. Um, and it's, I feel like this is something that you're very aware of and mindful of. Um, it's either resulted in you trying to be fiercely, strongly independent to the point where nobody can get close to you, or it's relied on you having like a really solid person in your life who you sometimes get afraid of losing because you don't know what you would do without them. And I feel like overall, the Nine of Pentacles reverse is just highlighting that need to feel secure and safe. Now, Coming over to the Five of Swords over here, the Five of Swords is really talking about that that um, fight or flight response here, that feeling as though the thoughts are just sort of whirling around your head and you don't have the ability to express them, let alone understand them sometimes. I feel like this is a frustrating feeling of not really knowing what's going on up there at times. Um, the Five of Swords for me is more about changing our thought patterns and changing the ways that we perceive our thought patterns as well reminding us that we are not our thoughts if that makes sense um the one of the most and this didn't help me at the time but i am someone who experiences anxiety and one thing that really helped me sort of ground myself again as i was able to sort of work through those symptoms and the tr initial triggers um, I was told to look at my thoughts objectively, to remove myself from my body, and to just sort of watch my thoughts drift into my mind and drift out, so that I'm not there accepting the weight of them all the time, and so that I don't feel that immediate responsibility to act upon them as well. When you have an overactive mind, it can get very exhausting, because you almost feel like you have to keep a tracker on your thoughts. Well, for me personally, I found that I just was trying to figure out, well, what does this mean? And why is it here? And why am I thinking about this again? And where did that thought come from? And when you're in a very elevated sort of situation, the thoughts just race. You, you, you really can't control them. So having that ability to sort of separate yourself, to step out of your mind and to look at your thoughts objectively coming in and out of your mind um, can help you sort of, I want to say dissociate enough so that you're not feeling overwhelmed by the weight of them while you're still technically attached because it, you're, you're looking at it, um, you know, theoretically really. Um, and then you're able to decide what you want to give your energy to as well. That could be a helpful practice for you. I don't know why that's coming up, but the Five of Swords reversed is very much like you kind of, you know that you shouldn't, but you still can't stop it anyway. And when you have an overactive mind, somebody telling you to just stop thinking is the worst thing that you can do. It's more about letting those thoughts happen and seeing them as an objective thing coming in and out of your mind and you deciding at a later stage what you want to feed energy into, what thought do you want to foster into a creative idea or into a helpful solution or into a genuine um, belief. It's up to you. Thoughts come and go. It's about us information gathering basically while we're, while we're living. Now, the high priestess over here reversed is that feeling of not really trusting self. And again, this can in the reverse feel like we well, can't trust what our mind is telling us. 
we feel like we can't trust what our feelings are telling us and it could feel like we can't trust what our heart is telling us the high priestess reverse does talk about trust issues and i feel like this is amplified by that need to feel safe so i see that your healing journey moving forward is about creating a strong sense of trust with self otherwise you may form unhealthy attachments with other people putting that responsibility on them to be a trustworthy and loyal person to you even when you can't trust yourself now in the immediate healing episode, like if you're coming straight out of a traumatic event, it is natural to form those bonds to people who feel like safe people. But over time, it is healthier to bring that trust back in self. And I see that over time, it is going to be about you creating that firm foundation of trust within self again, learning to trust yourself to make the right choices again. Um, that is really, for some of you, going to be the trickiest step is, is having that faith and trust in who you are and your ability to make the right choices so that you don't get put in a harmful situation again as well. Now, and I don't know why, but there is a feeling of guilt behind that high priestess as well. Um, it's, it could be some sort of, I want to say, I'm hearing survivor's guilt, but I don't know, that may not apply for all of you. Um, there is a feeling of guilt, like you don't really want to be trusted or you feel like you can't be trusted. Now, the Wheel of Fortune reversed. Usually I interpret this as right place, wrong time, or, or right time, wrong place kind of thing. Um, it's interesting though. It feels like that's more so talking about things slowing down for you so that you can get a, a leg up on the situation before things are given to you again. So you could be in this period now. It may feel like nothing's going right. It may feel like things are just really delayed and you want a change, but change doesn't seem to want you. I see that while you are healing, um, the first step in your healing journey is going to be to cut off most new opportunities because you're almost a um, open nerve and it feels like too much is just going to or, or just too much of the one thing may overwhelm you so you could find yourself in a very I want to say stagnant environment for some time while you're regrowing and um, kind of like a propagated vine you know we're putting a propagated plant in a cup of water and we're just letting it sit in that water until it establishes its own root system and until it grows into its own being and is strong enough to be transplanted into the soil and at that point the environment will change there's more opportunities for growth um, there's going to be new leaves formed where we may even bear fruit for the first time but until it's strong enough to bear that terrain until it is able to be put in soil. It needs to grow in this pot. And that's what I see the Wheel of Fortune reversed as for you guys. It's like Spirit's going to put you in this cup of water first. Um, and it may feel like a stagnant period of your life where not very much changes. You know, you're just sort of interacting with the same three people for the that whole period of time and you've had the same job and, and you're starting to feel like why is so much else happening to everybody else and I don't seem to be going through nearly as many changes. Um, it's because there's only so much that you can take at that time and you're in a period of, of slow but impactful growth and a lot of this is happening just in your little circle. Like you may have friends of friends and acquaintances sort of um, interacting with you or seeing you on social media. Excuse me. I don't know why I'm yawning. I'm so sorry, you guys. You're probably watching this at night. Um, and there may be this feeling of like, why me? Why can't I have what they have? And it's really just about this is what you need at this point in your journey. And if you can, remember to keep it focused on self because no two stories are the same. No two plants grow the same. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about plants. Maybe you guys are gardeners, but no two plants grow the same. We need to give you that time to grow in the water and to really cultivate yourself for who you are. So that's what I see for your healing journey, you guys. The issues we're looking at here is a feeling of safety, primarily needing to feel secure in your immediate environment, especially um, whoever you share your home with, they have to feel welcomed and they have to feel like someone who can keep you safe. 
Um, I see that anybody who you choose to share your life with has to have some sort of feeling of protector or you end up feeling very protective of them. I see that your healing journey involves you learning to trust yourself again to be able to make the right choices. You may even need to forgive yourself for some of the choices you made in your past. You will need to work through some of your um, feelings because there is a fight or flight response within you. This could be bouts of anger or it could just be this feeling of like just needing to run because you almost feel like you may be experiencing a panic attack at times. And I see that a lot of this involves um, you needing to be in a, a slow, still environment while your roots regrow and then opportunity will be brought to you. Now the Mother of Swords at the back of your deck reversed here is talking about limiting the advice that you're getting, um, being very professional with the advice that you're getting when it comes to your healing journey. I feel like this is about um, dissociating from people who have an attack mentality when it comes to healing, you know, like, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you trying that? Well, if that's what's hurting you, then why don't you stop it? You know, those very accusatory ways of helping people. Um, it's not helpful at all. And it makes you feel guilty for not healing good enough. You know, <laughs> it makes you feel guilty for, um, guilty for not being able to heal yourself good enough. And it feels like this could be a, a mother or a family member or just like a friend or just some sort of um, way that society sort of approaches it. So just being careful with the advice that you get around your healing and to be mindful of when people do react in that way because that is not helpful and it is going to be a hard thing to hear because you're going to then feel even worse. Um, you're going to then really start to feel guilty. And we don't need that to happen. That's not your burden to bear. So let's move forward into some advice. Moving forward for group one spirit. And what else can you tell us about their healing journey? What else do they what else can you tell us about what will happen once they tap into these healing energies? There we go. We've got some cool energy coming out. Okay, spirit wants to talk about all of them. This is gonna be a long video. We have Malachite here at the bottom, 26, Jupiter, oh, sacral chakra, okay, sacral chakra, wow. So I see that for some of you, healing this energy of safety and, and providing um, and trusting yourself could lead to you feeling safe enough to start your own family. I'm hearing that for some of you that could be an issue that you're working with because maybe you didn't feel protected as a child, so you kind of have this idea of, well, when I have children, it's not going to be like that, or if I, if I even choose to have children. And that's interesting because we did have this sort of stork-looking character over here who I think is actually a heron, but in that position, it kind of looks like a stork holding a, a baby. So maybe for some of you, your healing journey involves you being open to the idea of having your own children one day. Regardless, Malachite is a feeling of fortune. So where we had fortune blocked before until your roots grow, addressing this healing allows fortune to come back in. It, it allows you to have a change of pace, um, one that births new things with Sacral Chakra. Sacral Chakra is really about a feeling of purpose, um, inspiration and creation. I feel like we're, we're being inspired to take a new direction it may be a long period of, of stagnation for many of you until you feel ready enough to fly the nest of safety that you've been growing in. But I see that once you do make that choice to move, things will change quickly with Malachite. There will be signs of growth and positive growth very quickly for you. Now we also have Aquamarine here. Number four, we've got Cancer slash the moon, not really, it's the moon. Um, we also have the crown chakra and water. So Aquamarine is really telling us that your healing journey involves you setting a or establishing a sense of harmony and stability with the four. They're also indicating structure. It feels like you do need to be in control. Um, and I see here that the control seems to be over your emotions. Your healing journey involves you feeling stabilized. Now, that word isn't technically recovery friendly. It's something that implies unstable. Um, we want words that don't have good or bad sort of connotations. In order to be stabilized, it implies that you were unstable. And we don't really like the harshness of that word. So I guess instead it's about 
finding um, a sense of peace again more than anything with the number four here. I see that your healing journey in terms of you feeling ready enough to fly the nest involves you feeling at peace with your emotions, feeling connected to self again and feeling connected to source again. You will know when you're ready because you will have a feeling of optimism again. It's about really just letting yourself take this quiet still moment to feel your way through your healing. And I feel like a lot of this is intuitive you know it can't it's not something that can be measured by time or by another person's journey it's not something that can you know be a one size shoe fits all like a 30 day rehab stint it's not going to be that simple it's just about keeping the process simple surrounding yourself with few people and giving yourself a safe environment to slowly heal and grow and the moon is really talking about diving into some deep issues and it's almost implying that when you go into those deep issues, it could be helpful to do this with um, someone who shared a childhood with you. I feel like there, this could be helpful healing with a sibling, for example, or with a parent that you trust, um, feeling safe enough to confront the people who were supposed to protect you on why they weren't able to do so, or at least opening up with someone you trust about these issues as well. Because it feels like um, with that moon here, we're really diving deep into our shadow in that period, which is why it could take a little bit longer for some of you. Now this soon hatches into our Demortiorite phase. With the number 25, we've got the sun, we have the solar plexus chakra down below and fire element. So we go from this sort of still waters run deep energy into the frying pan over here with Demorti right now. And Demorti right is reminding us that our triggers will change over time. Our healing journey is non-linear. We may think that we've healed and then like I said at the beginning of your reading with that analogy with the shopping center, all of a sudden you're in a crowd and those feelings start again and you don't know why and it's very scary and you're with someone who doesn't really know that part of who you, of your past. Um, and you don't really know how to explain it. Now that is something that I don't want you to be worried about, but that's something that you need to know about healing. It is non-linear, and I feel that more than anything, this is about having patience with yourself as these challenges present themselves. Um, being Feeling safe enough to express yourself as well with Demortiorite. I feel like this is overall... Whatever you experience at this point is nothing compared to what you've been through in the past, right? We're just looking at an old scar and we're feeling that pain almost sympathetically. We're looking at an old scar and we're sympathizing with the pain of what it was when it was first cut. But it isn't cut, it's healed. Um, that pain is still felt because yes, we did experience it at one point in our life, but it it isn't happening now. We are safe, we are protected, and we are loved. I see that a lot of this is going to be internal, and it's going to be you just sort of understanding those triggers and working through remedying those triggers as well, because you have done the inner work, you have addressed those um, deep-rooted fears and that those deep-rooted rooted issues. It's more so about, it's just sign of representing itself and this could happen later in life when you're sharing your life with someone you really care about and when you feel like you're healed enough to not have to share that part of who you are with them so I feel like that's going to be the biggest challenge is these old issues arise and all of a sudden there's this choice that needs to happen of well am I going to share what happened in my past with this new person who I love and who I respect and who loves and respects me or will I just pretend it didn't happen and, and try to deal with it on my own? That is going to be the biggest question there because you, you are safe in this moment. You're very strong. You're very much developed from who you were back then. Um, but it feels like we're looking at the scar of an old wound and sympathizing with the pain that once was. Now this moves forward into our light amethyst phase. So your healing journey at this point in time involves reconnecting with your spirituality. We're less focused on the material world and more focused on the meaning behind our life and our journey. At this point in your journey, you are more likely to look at how your experiences can help others. We're looking at a reinvention phase here with the number seven. We have Uranus, we have the third eye chakra and air. You're thinking about how you can reinvent yourself based on what you have been through. There's a feeling of attainment here as though you have achieved some level of enlightenment. Um, you've achieved some sort of um, I don't want to say control because you're not trying to control anything anymore. You're, you're sitting above everything and you're looking down on it in an objective way. Kind of like what I was talking about with that 
thought process in your reading, right? Where you kind of look at your thoughts objectively. It's a meditation tool as well to kind of remove yourself and be able to let your thoughts just pass in and out of your mind objectively, almost watching them whirl in and out. Um, that's what it feels like you're at over here. You've reached a point where you've sort of gained enough connection to self to know that um, you're in a better position, to know that you have a level of power over um, your mind now, over the way that you approach situations, and you feel like you're wanting to share what you have learned with others. You enter the spiritual phase where you really want to connect with source, you want to connect with your faith, and you want to redefine the way that you perceive religion and spirituality as well. You may change religions over here, or you may go religionless and just look at it as faith and spirituality in general. This is a point in your life when you will spend a lot of time alone. Even if you are in a relationship, even if you have children, you're mostly focused on self here. You're mostly focused on the meaning behind every action that you do and what you want to do behind your life. And it's not even in a way of like, what is the purpose behind this life, you know? It's more so about, well, I've been through a lot, but like, why? What am I going to do with that moving forward? What am I, what do I want to create with all of this experience? Um, because it feels like you are channeling a lot of energy from divine at this time in a way where you want to share what you've learned with others. You feel ready enough to channel what you've learned as well as what divine is sharing with you. Now we have Amber over here, the number 21, Leo, and we also have the solar plexus and fire. Now this is, might be the funnest part of your journey, if I'm honest. There is a lot of sunshine here. There was there was passion over here. This this could indicate a relationship as well, the demortiorite phase, all right? When you leave your stagnant area, you may be interacting with a lot of new people or in entering a new relationship here. But the amber phase after our light amethyst, this feels exciting, this feels fun, this feels creative, this feels like us connecting with our inner child again, feeling 21 again, for those who um, resonate with an older age. The amber energy here feels like an opportunity to be yourself again after we were trying to reinvent ourselves and repurpose ourselves into something that can offer guidance and a new direction or or at least like a, a rooting sort of grounding checkpoint for other souls you kind of hit this point with amber where you're you're very just much you're very much in the moment it feels like you're just this being of pure joy and happiness who just sort of stays in the present moment you're not too concerned about the future you're not too dwelling or too heavily dwelling on the past you're just this very present being who seems to be taking um the most or making the most out of present experiences so it does get better for you guys group one i see that the amber tells me that you're going to have a very strong connection to younger energies at this point in your life especially if you have um, like nieces nephews grandchildren i feel like you're going to be a child again in a sense you're reinventing yourself physically you're feeling empowered you feel confident to be able to express yourself to those around you and to be able to um, talk about things in a light-hearted way you you have a very um, careful yet creative and fun way of expressing what you've been through to share hope to others. You become a walking sort of testament of what one can achieve when they tackle their issues earlier on and, and really give themselves the time and the patience to work through them healthily. Amber here says that you do enter your joyful period where you're living presently and where you're able to make the most out of your life, living in that present moment and really grabbing your joy by your hands. So that's beautiful. Let's see what else we can get. I'm, I might not be able to grab, let's grab a few cards from this deck. I might not be able to grab too many because your reading's already at 27 minutes, but we'll see what else we can get. For group one, please, Spirit, what else can you tell us about their healing journey? Can we get another card to clarify the aquamarine phase, please, Spirit? Thank you. The tear. Yes, you're going to need to keep things simple at this stage. You may be um, just, you know, surrounded by your closest sort of people because there will be tears. There will be purging. That's what the tear is more so for me. I think it's more of a tool, um, the ability to purge and release that pain from your heart space really so that you can reinvent the love that comes in so that you're giving the opportunity for for solid new beginning as well now this is the number 52 I don't know why that might resonate you could have a parent 
around that age or you could be around that age at that time in your life I don't know the number 52 could be significant for some of you but the tear is really about releasing and letting these things um, be purged from our system in a healthy way in a safe way what about the demortiorite please spirit we have the shapeshifter absolutely now at this point in our life we're very much focused on appearances the demortiorite talks about us sort of trying to mold and fit into our environment rather than letting ourselves internally dive deep and and repurpose our environment from the inside out so the demortiorite phase does indicate you trying to fit in <laughs> trying to redefine yourself in a very physical way you may change the way that you look in this period you may change your social scene you may hang out with some new exciting people these people don't seem to know about your past at least in depth it's very surface level interactions very surface level connections you are happy but you're not being honest with yourself at this point in your life what about light amethyst spirit what does that part of the healing journey look like we have the mystic yes so that is when you enter that point of wanting to know more about spirituality and faith you're really diving deep into self here and you're forging a strong connection to self your higher self is loving you in that moment you're very much connected to your mind's eye, to your intuition, and to your ability to connect with spirit as well, because you do have that gift. What you've been through could offer you a, one of the strongest connections to source that anybody could have in this lifetime, because it does sort of strip you back and force you to rebuild. So I see here for you guys that the mystic is really about your period of reinventing your life and trying to teach others or at least offer that insight to others through your practices, through what you do for work as well. You may end up being a light worker yourself. You may end up looking into tarot readings or Reiki healings or other forms of energy healing and crystal work. Um, really sharing your experiences with others in a way of healing and guiding. Now, what about the Amber stage? What can you tell group one about the Amber stage in their life spirit? Hello, we have the threshold. Yes, you've hit a new milestone here where you're leaving another safety net. Isn't that interesting? The threshold talks about feeling ready enough to take a leap of faith into a new part of our journey. Well, at least that's how I interpret it. <laughs> We're looking at the number 45 there as well. We had 22 in the mystic and now we have um, 15 in the shapeshifter. So the threshold here is really just talking about us taking another step of our journey, taking it another leap into another phase of our life and realizing that we can constantly reinvent ourselves. We don't have to pigeonhole ourselves into one type of being or one type of person with one type of profession and one type of personality. You're exploring a new part of your personality in the Amber phase that offers a lot of excitement, a lot of um, genuine connection, whereas the Demortiorite is more of like surface level. The Amber feels deeper. Even though Demortiorite has the sun, I just feel like it's very ego-based. And with Amber having Leo, it feels like we're connecting from a kindred place. Um, I don't know, the Sun and Leo could be interpreted as similar energies, but I'm seeing this as ego versus self, like genuine inner child self, connecting with somebody else's inner child type of energy and really feeling someone's um, energy rather than what they have to physically offer you. So this could involve you stepping into a new relationship that you actually connect to on a soul level as well, or having a child for the first time. There's a major threshold being crossed here that instigates genuine, pure feelings of joy and connection and love and um, empowerment because it feels like we're creating something over here with the solar plexus. We're taking that initiative. We're being very masculine, but there is the compassion and kindness and love of a pure, innocent sort of inner child spirit as well. Now, they're also wanting to show us the hunter. So I feel that overall your healing journey does involve things needing to slow down at some points. Feels like we take tangents and sidesteps, but it's actually a part of the grand purpose. We're designed to slow down when we are meant to because there's only so much that we can physically take. And with the one here, I feel like this does help you bring you closer to somebody else who is going to be able to um, treat you in the way that you deserve to be treated. Your healing journey is about coming into self though and learning to trust yourself again and learning to see yourself as a divine being in the sense of you are a part of this creation and you have the creation 
or the ability to create within you as well. And for some of you, you do create something very, very significant and meaningful in your lifetime that helps others and that offers others the opportunity to see things from an enlightened point of view as well. So in closing, let's get a dream oracle card. What is the overall healing advice for group one, please, spirit? Bottom deck energy is this moment is the foundation for all future moments. Open your mind and receive each moment as a new and exciting possibility. Wow. And that's where you get to eventually with the amber crystal. That's what your healing journey leads you towards group one. It's so that you can step into that power. Now we have life is at your service. You're worthy of everything you desire. Give life permission to create through you and become visible through your dreams. You are a creator and you will come to know that in your lifetime. Your pain does not define your strength, but it is a part of who you are and what you have been through. Your experiences all lead to you realizing how powerful and creative you are. Um, we also have, we attract what we are. Therefore, dreaming is a journey within. What inner beliefs are still restricting you, putting you down and making excuses that hold you back from your dreams? And I feel like that is the shapeshifter, demortiorite energy. We think we're, we're healed enough. We think we're ready enough, but we're still forging attachment attachments based on how they make us feel um, and we're struggling to see how this why this isn't fulfilling you know we're not really allowing ourselves to dig deeper at that point but we do get there with the light amethyst one more card for you group one what else do i need to know we have turn lemons into lessons you're going to be the pro of that okay you may hate this phrase right now but you're going to be the pro of that and we also have Today holds unlimited possibilities to see the beauty in life. And that's that idea of being objective too and sort of removing yourself from the situation so that you can look at it as a bigger picture scenario. Your bottom deck energy is your soul whispers love, your ego shouts fear. So those were just little cute affirmations that may be able to help you for the here and now. But I hope that this overall reading was able to show you and shed light on your healing journey. You may resonate as someone who's already at the light amethyst or who may be just at the aquamarine you need to know that all of these parts of your journey does lead to you being a very strong a very empowered a very creative and powerful being who is very connected to their joyful present there is no wrong or right way to heal as long as you are listening to your body and paying attention to what you feel guided to do your journey involves you learning to trust yourself again learning to connect to yourself and source again in a healthy way. You may redefine the way that you look at faith and spirituality in general. It involves you needing to slow down at times and keeping it simple with your social group, especially so that you can feel safe and protected in your environment. And it involves you learning about your triggers and how they manifest throughout your lifetime. So group one, that's what I see for you, sweets. That is your healing journey. That is your life after trauma. And that is what I have. If you want to see more about the giveaway, please scroll down below and have a look at Donna's um, channel as well. There will be a more um, information about the giveaway on her channel. And of course, she's done the exact same reading. So while you're at it, if you come here first, why don't you head over there and get some more information as well? Look after your beautiful self, group one. You have every right to take what resonates and not let the rest take from you. And I shall see you in another video. Bye. Hi, group two, and welcome. If you chose the Labradorite crystal, then this is going to be your reading. So group two, today we are looking at your healing journey. Now, group one's reading was actually really good. I enjoyed it a lot as the reader, and I feel like it really offered some clear direction. I feel like in today's video, we're not so much focusing on advice. We're more so trying to look at what your life will be like after the experiences that you've been through. Now, I still at this point in time, I'm not 100% sure of what I will title my video, but I do want to warn you that this is a heavier sort of topic. It's based off the idea of looking at your life after trauma to offer you hope and to show you a, a, a glimpse of what could be as well based on the actions that you take um, following something quite traumatic. Now, group two, I'm going to start with some tarot. We're going to be looking at your healing journey. In this portion of your reading, we may be looking at certain issues that um, may be triggering. So I do recommend that this is the part when you get that stress ball, you know, <laughs> just in case it does trigger you. Now, group two, please spirit. 
for those who chose the Labradorite crystal, what can you tell us about their healing journey? What can you tell us about Group 2's healing journey? Okay, we have the Nine of Cups coming out for you first. Interesting. What can you tell us about Group 2's healing journey, Spirit? They're showing you the Two of Swords reversed. Hmm. What else can you tell us about Group 2's healing journey, Spirit? We're not really going to be talking about... I'm not going to be focusing on the things that may have caused you this pain in the first place because I don't want it to just be something focusing on that but if they do arise I will discuss them to help sort of paint a picture of the healing style that I'm talking about the Hierophant over here interesting what else can you tell us about group two's healing journey they're showing me the four of wands reversed as well I want to get one more card what else can you tell us about Excuse me, we've got two more cards. So we've got strength and we have the seven of swords, the sneaky seven of swords coming out reversed. Okay, interesting. Trust issues. Um, sorry, I don't mean to just blare that out after I was saying I wasn't going to talk. Trust issues. Um, but yeah, that's coming out very strongly, very strongly. Bottom deck energy is the father of wands. Excuse me. I'm so sorry, group two. That just came out of nowhere. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to just yawn in the middle of your reading. I think I did that for group one as well. It's not even early. I have no reason to. I apologize. Now, group two, what I can see here is that trust issues are being highlighted in your reading, okay? And I feel like this is because somebody did sort of seem to play mind games with you. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to focus on this, but I can see that your healing journey involves you forging um, strong connections where you feel safe enough to be able to talk about things that are on your mind. We start your reading with the Nine of Cups reverse, which talks about someone really selfishly manipulating emotions to get what they want out of the situation. The Nine of Cups reverse is talking about addressing um, unfair expectations when it comes to love and and love loving displays of affection as well as like people used that against you so that they were in a position of power the using emotions against you um, the nine of cups reversed is just coming across as a very selfish person someone who has um, yeah, made you feel guilty for the way that you love, made you feel like you were too kind or you were too open or too empathetic or too understanding or too patient or just too loving. And this led to you overanalyzing your actions and your thoughts. Now, this could manifest as gaslighting, especially with the Seven of Swords coming out as well. The Two of Swords is saying that your healing issues revolve around trust issues, needing to feel confident enough to speak about what's on your mind because either when you did talk about these things they felt belittled or um, when these issues were sort of highlighted they were made to feel like they weren't even issues in the first place or somebody said one thing and did the other thing type of energy really losing that ability ability to see clearly and to have a firm grip of reality which makes me think that it's a form of gaslighting now moving forward to the hierophant's energy over here Group two, the Hierophant is a feeling of protection in your reading by a system or by some measure of authority. Now, the authority figure would be someone who I interpret more as an emperor figure. The Hierophant is more of a system. This could be schooling. This could be a religious sort of system. Um, this could be an institution. It feels like this system is something that was intended to protect so it kind of seems like a positive in your reading but it may not be for all of you because I see that this system has no connection to your sense of home with the four of wands reversed you need to heal these issues around feeling or having a, a safe place to call your own it's almost like you were in this feeling you like it's kind of like you grew up in a house not a home or you have this attachment to some sort of building or some institution but not a home sort of feeling now that may not apply to all of you but the hierophant overall is like a constitution some sort of tradition um, and I feel that for many of you it offered routine it offered consistency so as restrictive as it may have been or as cold as it may have been because it doesn't feel like a home it's more of a house um, it did at least offer routine and consistency and I feel like you're someone who 
part of your healing is is you crave that routine and consistency. Some of you may enter the military, for example, or you may enter very restrictive partnerships, or you may enter organizations and, and companies, or um, just things that help you feel like you've got a sense of, of regularity in your day to day. Um, some of you, this could manifest as prison, you know, have being in and out of that system because it's some sort of consistency, it's something stable. But the Hierophant is referring to a structured organization here. Now, the Four of Wands is talking about um, a separation of home and identity. So for some of you, this is a feeling of not being tied to the place that you grew up in, feeling as though you don't necessarily resonate as a member of your family or as a member of your culture. It could feel like you have this dissociated feeling from when you, from where you grew up. It could be you trying to separate yourself from that place as well because you don't feel connected anymore. But I see that for many of you, it involves you creating a home away from where you grew up in. Your healing involves you creating a new stable home for yourself. And it involves you exploring your opportunities and options as well and not limiting yourself in what you kept excuse me, and what you can create. For some of you, you may accidentally settle down too early because you're just craving that feeling of structure and you want to sort of provide and protect for someone in a way that you wanted to. Um, but for most of you, I see that you're going to just be searching for this place to call home, for this thing that feels like your home. Now, moving over to the strength card here, your healing journey does involve you um, feeling, I want to say able to, now, for many of you, you have a very masculine energy, a masculine approach to your healing journey. Um, you may be a very feminine person, but it feels like you kind of look at your healing as I need to do better when it happens to me type of thing. Like the next time this happens, I'm going to be like this and I'm going to be like that. And especially if you felt like you were lied to, you were put in a position where someone, all they had to do was be honest and they lied to you. Um, it feels like you're trying to take that into your own hands next time. You're the one in control next time. You're the one calling the shots next time. You have a kind heart and you're not going to let that happen to you or the person involved in the situation next time. Whether you're a parent at this time, whether you're a partner, whether you're a friend, or whether you're just this person in your own life creating new friendships and, and, and connections in general. It feels like next time you're going to be in control, you're going to be in power, and you're not going to let that happen to anyone involved. You have a very hands-on approach at, at sort of offering this, this safety and this honesty. Now, I do feel like the lion's heart is, is being highlighted here. There's a feeling of bravery in this strength card. So for some of you, to overcome that situation where you felt weak and manipulated, you enter a very physical profession where you become stronger, where you were expected to use your strength, your bravery, your compassion, um, in a way of, of protecting and serving. So that can apply to some of you, or you may end up attaching yourself to a partner who's like that, you know? <laughs> They're out here protecting and serving. Um, because there's this feeling of like, you're very much hands-on about how you you see relationships. It's like, no, you, that's your honor, that's your duty. Like you have to, you have one job as a parent, or you have one job as a partner. If you're serious about someone, then you have to take it seriously. It's very black and white for you at that point. Loyalty is very black and white to you at that point. Now, we're looking at the Seven of Swords as your last card, excluding the bottom deck. So the Seven of Swords is highlighting a feeling of being gaslit. Um, or just being felt a hostage to somebody else's mind games, like this inauthenticity. And I feel like overall, what this experience helps you with is the ability to see through bullshit, okay? I'm sorry for swearing, but you have this in uncanny ability to just feel when somebody is lying. You know, you know what it looks like physically. You know what the jittering and sort of shuffling of, of fingers and feet and, and the inability to maintain consistent eye contact, all of those things as well. But it's more of like an intuitive knowing. You can tell when somebody is lying to you. And I feel like this is something that you loathe more than anything else. Like you don't care if somebody um, is flaky, at least they're honest, you know, like, hey, I'm not going to make it anymore. No worries. Thank you for telling me. I feel like 
Your healing journey involves you realizing how important honesty is to you. Honesty and loyalty are everything. If you feel like if somebody can't be consistent with what they have to say, then it's better that they don't say anything at all rather than lie to my face. So that is interesting. Now, we also have the Father of Wands reversed over here, which is that feeling of flakiness. The Father of Wands upright is someone who's very good at planning out a course of action. It's like pre-emperor energy, um, strength energy as well. This fiery energy of, of planning a way forward, of cultivating a purposeful um, new direction and really getting ready to gear up into that new direction. When it's reversed, either we weren't able to consistently plan something, we weren't able to consistently prepare for something, or it simply fell apart because um, it lacked the consistent energy full stop. You know, it's just the energy is hot and cold or the energy is here nor there. It's not able to show up correctly. Now, the other reason why the Father of Wands could be here in verse is because there's feelings of jealousy here. So your healing journey could involve you addressing feelings of jealousy because of these trust issues that you experienced, because of this um, lack of honesty and and the lying that you may have been through the deceit and deception that you went through they could manifest as as bitterness and jealousy as well with the father of wands here so let's get into our next oracle deck our next oracle deck will be showing us what your healing journey looks like specifically and this was honestly for me this was the funnest part of group one because it highlighted the different stages of your healing journey all right so group one for the spirit what does your healing journey look like? Where do we start with group one spirit? What does their healing journey look like from this scenario? Hello? Oh, okay. <laughs> We're being shown the smoky quartz over here, number 18. We have Virgo, we have Mercury with the throat chakra, and we also have the earthy influences of Virgo. Okay, I like that. <laughs> um, group two, please spirit. What else can you tell us about their healing journey? Group two, we have a Venturine coming out for you, the number eight, Neptune, we've got the water element, and we have your crown chakra. What else can you tell us about group two's healing journey? We have Garnet, okay, the number 13, Sagittarius, so we've got the fire element, and we have third eye chakra. One more card, what else can you tell us about group two's healing journey? <laughs> We have the red cornelian. It's actually carnelian, but this is the number one. We have the sun, we have the fiery element, and we have the solar plexus chakra. Now, bottom deck energy is citrine quartz. Number 23, we have, I believe that's Neptune, again, but it's air influences with the, excuse me, I'm going to yawn again. Oh my God. I'm so sorry, group two. I was going to say it's the crown chakra, but what a rude yawn. I honestly, it's, it's just my little pet thing. I feel like it's, personally, I, I apologize. If I could control it, I wouldn't do it. It feels disrespectful, so I do apologize, group two. All right, now, your healing journey is, well, it's, it's something that you would expect, okay? Especially with the smoky quartz. What you've been through involves somebody really just misconstruing words and, and putting things over you, and, and it leads to you having trust issues and feeling like, Honesty is probably your biggest value here. Um, you enter a period of healing straight off the cuff with the smoky quartz here. Your first stage of healing involves you processing things, very analytical, very thinking. Maybe you enter therapy at this point too. We're looking at a Virgo moment of, of isolation, of needing to go into yourself, um, being careful about where you get your advice from. I feel like you do open up to people at this point in time though. You're focusing on a routine again, on a health routine for many of you. And it's this feeling of just sort of healthily processing what you've been through. You start to get information about those events. I feel like secondary sources come up and, and sort of add little bits of pieces to the overall story, which helps you kind of piece together your healing path. And it helps you make sense of what happened as well. In this point, you're very it's very clear to you that you did nothing wrong. It's very clear to you that this is a type of person that's out there. And it sort of puts you in defense mode here with Virgo. You may unhealthily isolate yourself initially, 
or at several times in this period because you have those feelings of trust issues. Um, you do struggle to open up and I feel like this is about going back to people who are already a part of your life. You're not starting any new sort of connections at this point in your life. You're going back to people who are already a part of your life and you're establishing new routines and just sort of being introspective and reflecting on what you've been through, grounding yourself in your new reality as well. Now from that period, we enter this adventuring period where we're starting to sort of wonder um, where to next. I feel like we're starting to get a daydreamy energy here. You are a dreamer, group two. You're someone who can get lost in their own minds. You have a rich inner world, as we like to say. And I feel like you get stuck in a bit of a fantasy at this point in your journey because you want more from life but you don't know where to next. So you may try to start new things at this time, but there is an inconsistent energy here. You don't feel 100% emotionally available or ready yet at this point in your journey, but it is where you have your feelers out, right? You have your feelers out and you're just sort of trying some new things. You're trying to sort of spice things up a little bit. You're trying to get out of a routine, but you end up getting stuck in a cycle instead. And I feel like this cycle is a um, an emotional cycle of, of attaching your yourself to fantasies and illusions rather than putting down solid roots in a real um, energy. I feel like you're hesitant still at this point to create anything really stable and, and deep and meaningful. Like I would doubt that you'd enter a serious relationship at this point in your life. You may accidentally get stuck in one um, because you have your feelers out, but I don't think that is your intention at this point in your journey. I feel like you're just exploring things and you're getting to know your fantasies a little bit better and you're trying to um, get out of this routine that you may have gotten stuck in with smoky quartz. We're, we're feeling a sense of like, we wanna get out there again because we've been looking after ourselves, we look better, we feel good, but we don't know what we want. That's the confusion here. We feel like we're ready, but we still don't know what we want. And our dreams and fantasies are kind of guiding us by showing us what we can have, um, but we still don't really know what our heart wants. Now, this seems to catalyst into something wonderfully spectacular over here with Garnet. This is a quick turn of events with Garnet. Garnet is something that brings you fortune very fast. I feel like there's um, a situation that feels a little bit unlucky at first with the number 13, and yet it turns into a series of greatly good fortunate events. I feel like something may just sort of roll out of control here, snowball into something quite big and impactful without us realizing it. This feels like a very lucky period of our life where one good thing turns into another good thing and before we're even able to process what happened before, um, it just kind of all leads into something pretty, pretty impressive. And I don't know, it feels like we can't really connect with it though because it's all happened so fast. We haven't had that natural time to um, acclimate to our new settings because I feel that for many of you, it involves moving, it involves travel, or it involves new exciting people and experiences coming in. Sagittarius indicates a foreigner of some sorts and really exploring things and, and educating ourselves on what is out there as well. I'm really seeing high higher education and religion here. Some of you may take a new approach towards your, your religion or your faith and your beliefs in general, especially with the third eye here. But I feel like more than anything, you're just sort of following your intuitive path here. You don't see this as an impactful step forward, but it is a highly intuitive step forward. And all of these little um, niggling feelings that you seem to follow lead to a lot of good fortune at this point in time. I feel like it also leads to a lot of new people, but I don't see you really forging strong relationships there. I see that a lot of people want your time and energy here because they're loving the space that you're in. They're very curious about you, but you're very focused on yourself here. You're very focused on yourself and, and just sort of gathering experiences you're still trying to figure out what matters to you. I feel like you have a feeling here of what you want from life, but you don't really, you're not really attached to anything. <laughs> Sagittarius people, not really attached to things. They're just here for the ride type of energy. I don't mean to um, roast Sagittarius people. Love your energies, love the, love the vibes. I can appreciate the free spirits, but that's what it feels like group two. You're a free spirit here gathering experiences, not really attaching yourself to anything and just sort of feeling yourself through your good fortune. 
Now, what happens here is the universe is giving you opportunity and you're going, yes, 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 come, please, I want it, I want it all, I'll do it, I'm there, five o'clock, no worries, and you're there. And the universe is like, wow, I tested you and you passed all the tests, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you the big one. It's kind of like you were fishing, okay? See this as a fisherman who goes to the same jetty for 20 years, right? And they're consistent. They never change. They're there. They get enough food to feed their family. They come home. People around them might come and go. One person that they never saw ever again managed to catch a big, huge bluefin tuna or yellowfin tuna. And they never got that luxury in all of the 20 years that they were there. This is your blue and yellow fin tuna group two. Your red carnelian moment is a strong, powerful connection to self because you have a new, strong, powerful sense of purpose and direction. You go from being in this free-spirited Sagittarius energy to a whole fresh new start of drive, motivation, power, and I want to say just purpose. This could be the birth of your first child. It could be a creation of a new business. It could be you entering a committed partnership and realizing that you two have a shared purpose and that you both really want the same things and you never thought you could have that with somebody. It feels huge. It's impactful. It's a brand new beginning and it's filled with a lot of joy, a strong connection to self and a sense of positive, optimistic excitement for what the future holds. The red carnelian here is a brand new fresh start with a lot of drive. The solar plexus chakra tells me that you're so excited about this you can't wait to start. And you almost like before this opportunity can even come you're sitting there feeling it coming towards you. You're like oh my god I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I could see it in my mind's eye. I knew of every step, every time that I said yes that this was what it would lead to. You finally land your whopper, your yellowfin tuna. And this red carnelian is almost like the peak of your healing journey because from there spirits indicate that there's just a lot of happiness there's a lot of connection with the sun there's a feeling of empowerment you're so um, comfortable in expressing who you are that you find it easy to connect with authentic people in return you have that uncanny ability to know when people are lying to you and people see that in you as well you're so high vibrational at that point group two that you're automatically deflecting dishonest disingenuine people you're at a point in your life where your connections are meaningful your connection to self is so strong that you attract equally strong individuals into your life and I feel like this new sense of purpose is something that brings you a lot of joy, a lot of fulfillment, and a lot of gratification. So that's really beautiful. There's a lot of fire here in your reading. You could be a fire sign, or you could have a north node in a fire sign, or maybe you're, um, I don't know, it just feels like there's a lot of forward movement energy here. Um, and where Sagittarius' energy, oh, I don't know, is Sagittarius feminine? It might be a masculine energy. It just feels like you have a lot of masculine traits of being able to assert yourself and, and say yes and put yourself actively in the position to receive rather than being passive and waiting. And that is what your strength is. That is what your power is. That is how you overcome your um, what you have been through and that is how you get back on track with your healing as well. Um, and I feel like this for you is, is really just a, a strong tale of empowerment. So let's get some more cards to clarify the gem oracle cards. Group two, please, Spirit. Can we clarify the smoky quartz phase of their healing journey? <laughs> the venom, yeah. You're needing to just sort of go back to self, spend some time on self. This is when you have that health routine. This is when you're focused more on, um, I want to say, like your health and in general your fitness and you're also just being careful about who you keep around you because you are trying to detox with the venom here you're trying to get poison out of your system you're trying to get rid of this toxic energy that was around you and it feels like you develop the anti-venom within your own blood you know you develop the ability to rise above those situations because listen People like that are out there, behavior like that exists, and it's about knowing and identifying it. And I feel like you learn that, you, you identify it very well, very quickly, you're able to um, develop your own anti-venom and be, you know, once bitten, twice the wiser, not twice as shy, twice the wiser. You're a very wise being 
group two in your lifetime and this healing journey in particular is about you developing wisdom and from a, a lion's point of view there's a lot of courage here you're not just going to passively sit there and, and go i know you you're going to be you're going to be the one to call someone out and go excuse me no that's not how we treat people. That's not how we talk to people. I don't like the way you're talking to her. You need to stop. Like, you're that person. And it's always, like, in the right context. Like, you're not a Karen. <laughs> Sorry, Karens. I know Karens. They're beautiful people. I don't know why that name has such negative connotations. But um, you're not that kind of person who sort of oversteps and doesn't mind their own business. You're that person who calls it out for what it is and really just addresses these things for what they are. It's very windy today. There's lots of branches falling down outside. Um, what about the Aventurine? Can we talk about the Aventurine Crystal Spirit? What else can you tell us about that period of their life? Hello. We have the Poet. Okay, so this is the dreamy energy that we were talking about. You getting in your head, fantasizing about your future, really sort of exploring your future internally, um, a lot of daydreams, not really sure about what you want emotionally, but you are experiencing things. You're letting yourself be open to experiences. And I feel like people do enter your life around this time, but you're very careful about who you let close to you. With the poet here, you have a soft side to you that is very strongly cultivated at this part of your healing journey. You may be writing more. You may be singing more. You're very connected to your artistic side with the poet. Um, very, this period of introspection turns into um, reflection and, and just sort of expressing your emotions as well and connecting with that softer side of you. Okay, love it. What about the Garnet um, period for group two? What's going on in the Garnet period of their healing journey? They're showing me the sword, yes. I feel like this is when you kind of are trying to find your purpose, but you haven't fully gotten there yet with the sword. There's still a feeling of you just kind of needing to... Sorry, I'm just going to check what fell down there. Okay, sorry, group three. That wind knocked a branch on the roof, but I thought something had fallen outside. Uh, excuse me, did I call you group three? <laughs> group two, sorry, group two. Um, we're looking at the sword over here. Now, Garnet is a period of your life where you're really out here sort of following the wind. You know, your intuition's telling you to do this, so you're doing that. You're attracting a lot of good fortune. There's a lot of people curious about you. Um, you don't seem to be forging any deep and meaningful connections. Um, if you are, I feel like it's people getting attached to you. I don't see you necessarily getting attached to anyone or anything. You're very much a free spirit at this point in your journey. You're out here gathering experiences. And with the sword, it feels like your idea is to not really take things too seriously. I feel like, yes, you still have that ability to call things out, um, but you're being very... Um, you're trying not to care too much. You're trying not to take things personally and you're trying not to be everybody's knight in shining armor. You're really just trying to be careful about what you do stick your nose in. And I see that this is more so about you finding your own truth, you know, doing the things that you've always wanted to do, really trying to put yourself out there for the sake of following what makes you happy. And I feel like most of this is because you don't really know what makes you happy. We go from this confusing period where you don't know what you want emotionally to where you're just trying to focus on finding what you want and what is going to make you happy. You're not thinking about it too deeply anymore. You're simply living in the moment and waiting for the moment to um, happen for you, basically. So let's talk about your Red Cornelian phase. What is this Red Cornelian phase in Group 2's healing journey about? We have the siren. I knew it. I feel like you saying yes, yes, yes all the time leads to you pulling in something big. This is your yellow fin tuna. This is you manifesting a huge opportunity for yourself, a brand new beginning, an explosive new beginning. It feels like the whopper. It feels like there's a lot behind this. There's a lot to be grateful for in this moment. And it feels like it's all sort of happening in a way where you find feel connected to your moment you finally feel like this is what I've been waiting for this is what I've been feeling for I'm glad I didn't settle down I'm glad I stayed free I'm glad I just took time out to explore my feelings I'm glad I took time to rebuild myself in a healthy way focusing on my health and detoxing and I'm glad I did wait because this is what I've been wanting this whole time and with the vision as your bottom deck energy I feel that citrine quartz energy you guys the citrine quartz is about raising your vibration it's about allowing opportunities to come your way by staying strong 
strongly connected to your intuitive self, letting yourself dream and, and fantasize and think about what you really want and letting spirit work with you through your thoughts as well to bring you what you want. I feel like you've created all of this through a vision of what you wanted for yourself. So in closing, I'm going to get some words of affirmation about your healing. I hope that that was helpful though. I hope that it helped sort of paint a picture of what your healing journey looks like. Um, the next reading is going to be a lot more lighthearted. We've covered some pretty serious topics in my recent YouTube videos. So we're going to be looking into a juicy, I reckon we'll do a love reading next. We'll keep it fun though. We'll keep it fun and lighthearted. Could be 18 plus. I'm not too sure. Let me know what you think down below. Um, group two though, to finish your healing journey, what words of affirmation will summarize group two's healing experience for it? Wow, that was quick. Excuse me, there's too many. Okay, no, it's only three. <laughs> Okay, that's your bottom deck energy, but I want to get some of these cards too. What words may be most helpful for group two on their healing journey? Nice. All right, so to put it simply, commit to self-care rituals. That's what really kickstarts your healing journey, group two. Feeding that, that love back into self through a healthy health routine, self-care rituals. And I feel that absolutely with your smoky quartz period of detox. We also had from that deck, get back to nature and reconnect to your hippie roots. So you do have that earthy ability of grounding yourself. I feel like you kind of want to get out in nature, not get back to nature. You want to get out there with the garnet and explore different um, environments and different places, different people, different cities. Now, and from this dream cards deck, your bottom deck energy was dare to dream a little bigger, dare to ask for a little more not because everything should be bigger but for you to see where your limits lie where your limits are and I do feel that for you guys I feel like you become this beautiful free spirit who's just so curious and so um, excited to be out in the world and to be free after feeling stuck in something that really kept you um, down because it feels like it kind of limited your experiences you lost the ability to believe in, in what you were creating you didn't feel emotionally invested in, in whatever that was and it was a very selfish situation of you sacrificing yourself for this other person and it also felt like this led to you not trusting in, in your partners anymore and having a sense of discernment when people tell you something you're like okay we'll prove it like it's one thing to say it but prove it now we also have what would you need to give up in order to achieve your dream as one of your affirmations that could help be helpful in your dream, excuse me, in your healing journey. We have trust is to be able to trust what you cannot yet see with your eyes. Use your imagination, create your dreams in your mind and they will become clearer for you to see. That is the Supreme Court's energy. Use your imaginations, make your dreams, uh, create your dreams in your mind and they will become clearer for you to see. We also have get, be curious in your everyday life. React with interest to everything new life presents to you. Curiosity will open your mind um, for new possibilities. So I do feel that. I feel like that's the Sagittarius phase here. Be curious in your everyday life. React with interest to everything new life presents to you and curiosity will open your mind for new opportunities, new possibilities. So group two, that's the reading that I have for you. That is your healing journey. Um, we talked about something very specific here. That was the thing that Spirit chose to focus on in this reading. Groups one's reading was very different. Um, I don't recommend that you cross watch. It's up to you if you feel called to. But I have a feeling that each of the groups are going to be very different to allow diversity and to cover a whole range of different sort of topics and issues. Um, but I really want to just take time to thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for supporting me and for supporting Donna. If you would like to be a part of the giveaway, um, follow the directions down below to enter. Uh, look after your beautiful self group too. Remember to take what resonates. Do not let the rest take from you. If you were triggered throughout this reading, I do recommend that you take some mindful moments to yourself after this video to just sort of recharge, to rest, to recover, to address any issues that felt like they were being triggered and to look forward to this beautiful future that you're creating for yourself. Sending you so much love and light group two and I shall see you in another video. Bye. Hi group three and welcome. If you chose the zebra stone as your crystal palm stone, then this is going to be your reading. 
Group three, welcome. I do have my flower agate down here to help me stay in alignment and channel clear messages for you guys today. Um, your zebra stone is very new to my collection and I do love it, if I'm honest. Like, <laughs> it's still like a new baby and I wasn't sure if I wanted to include it on the channel. It's just kind of this beautiful thing that sits in my kitchen. So I don't know, you might be the last time that I, I use that um, crystal in a reading. Now today's video could be triggering. I just stumbled over that word. It could be. So I do want you to sort of take time. I'm assuming that you would have, but just in case you need some water or you need some um, paper, if you want to journal something, I recommend that you take time to do that now. We're going to be looking at your healing journey, group three. Now my intention is not to focus on the things that have led to this healing, um, but they will come out in the first part of your reading. Certain aspects may be addressed and talked about. I'm not going to dwell on them because we're not just going to talk about everything that went wrong. We're going to be focusing more on what is going right and what do you have to look forward to, where to from here type of energy. So group three, we're going to start with your tarot cards over here. Um, well, these aren't my tarot cards, but we're going to get cards for you. <laughs> we're going to be looking at your healing journey. So what are the issues that you may be facing and how spirit, um, how your healing journey takes place basically in the beginning. That's what tarot is going to tell us. We will be covering some beautiful, beautiful themes of transformation next, um, but we do need to address this first to make sure that you're in the right group. So for those who picked the beautiful zebra stone, what happens with their healing journey spirit? What are we looking at here with group three's healing journey? We start with the chariot reversed. Okay, I want to put you over there. And that is followed by the mother of wands reversed. Okay, we have some um, toxic maternal energy here. Okay, not feeling supported in a sense. Feeling, um, feeling as though you were left to your own devices type of thing. Group three, what is the healing journey? Yeah. Okay, this is interesting, because after I said that, we have all this masculine energy now. We have the Father of Wands and the Emperor coming out reversed, so my days, the Father and the Mother are reversed, with the Emperor reversed, and the Chariot reversed. Can I get one more card for Group 3, please, Spirit? Um, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> that got stuck in my blinds. What is this? The mother of, daughter of swords. Wow, we have the mother and the father and the daughter now. Oh my lord. Bottom deck energy is the ten of swords, speaking of. Okay, I'm going to have to grab my amethyst, I think. So what I can see here, group three, is that your healing journey is because of something that was supposed to keep you safe, really just sort of throwing you out and leaving you to your own devices. The chariot reversed is interesting. It kind of it kind of talks about your home. It talks about your home situation. It talks about you maybe leaving home from a young age or feeling not like you couldn't be at home when you were younger. There's something here about not feeling safe, not feeling um, able to be at home and like you had to get away from home. Now, the chariot reverse does talk about frustration in the sense of you want movement, but you just can't move as well. So I feel that for many of you, you may have been stuck in a toxic environment that you couldn't remove yourself from. You may have been in a situation where you wanted to break out of this, um, but for whatever reason, somebody had like taken your wheels from you. Now, moving forward from the chariot into the mother of wands, this card talks about a manipulative feminine energy who is almost jealous of what we have and making us feel um, guilty for what we have as well. This is someone who is supposed to protect us and instead they make us feel like we have to protect ourselves. This is someone who isn't giving us the attention that we want and this is someone who is making us feel guilty for also getting attention elsewhere. So it's not a very comfortable energy and it does feel like a mother. It feels like someone who should have been more present and instead they, they were focused on other things to say the least as well. Coming over to the Father of Wands, 
this card is really talking about someone who should be planning for us, who should be taking action for us, who should be having an active role in protecting us and providing for us, not being there either. So we're looking at an absent mother and an absent father here. We're looking at um, some very sort of jealous energies, some very angry energies. We're looking at an environment that could have shaped us into feeling very um, emotionally outcasted, like we can't connect with the place that is supposed to teach us how to connect. Um, we're looking at two selfish people who are very much focused on themselves instead of us. And we're looking at someone who teaches us that to be jealous is to be loved. To, to feel like someone loves you is, is, to know, um, is to know that they are jealous of the other people in your life as well. So the Father of Wands, interestingly, is really addressing this, this idea that um, we had to be this person who was able to provide and plan for us. So I'm kind of looking at this as a very... Um, selfish environment of instead of teaching us what to do they kind of taught us what not to do you know they kind of taught us everything that you shouldn't do everything that you shouldn't um <laughs> do to yourself and to those you care about basically coming over to the emperor reverse this is feeling as though again we're not protected for we're not provided for the emperor is an authoritative figure so this could have led to you experiencing issues with authority figures feeling like you were a bit of an anarchist because anyone who had been in a position of power abused it and they didn't look after you in the way that they should have um, this is also talking about someone using their power against you so not looking after you in the sense that they should have and being there only for themselves again more selfish energy wanting that experience for themselves rather than to create something for the ones that they care about. When I look at an emperor in the reverse, it makes me think of a dictator more, excuse me, more than a um, an emperor because a, a good emperor would be someone who looks after their empire, who is aware of the different um, villages and townships and and cities under their control and it is someone who is wanting to provide for their people and create for their people and instead this is someone who is using every bit of power that they have to control and manage their resources for themselves to make themselves look better and to get themselves ahead in this lifetime. Now following that environment it, we move to the Daughter of Swords here which tells me that there is a feeling of, I will never be bigger than this. Like, the Daughter of Swords talks about someone who's feeling trapped in in a, a specific age, a specific period of time, feeling emotionally or intellectually stunted. Someone who feels like, who is telling themselves that they can never process beyond this, they can never progress beyond this. The Daughter of Swords is someone who really struggles with the way that they see themselves, um, and is telling themselves that this may be it, you know, well, if I'm better than I was when I was 10, then I'm doing better than I ever expected to be. It's someone who has a fairly um, pessimistic point of view of themselves and someone who tells themselves that, well, it could be worse than this. Like, this isn't exactly what I wanted. It isn't exactly what I expected, but it could be worse than this. I didn't expect to live this long anyway. And the Daughter of Swords Reverse is really just highlighting this inability to progress because the way that we see ourselves is so limited. We're not allowing new opportunity in. And that's what the Ten of Swords Reverse is also talking about. It's also addressing the fact that we struggle to end painful cycles. We go through periods of denial here because of our past betrayals. We're always the ones to self-sabotage so that it never, it either, um, it will never get that bad or it possibly can't be any worse than it, than it has been. We're almost always um, setting ourselves up for that loss before it has even happened, which is a, a sadly negative way of looking at it. But that is the issues that we're kind of talking about here. We're going to get more into your healing journey now. I'm going to be pulling gem oracle cards to highlight where to from here. What does your healing journey forward look like? Okay, I just had to pause it for a second because I am expecting um, furniture to come today and I keep hearing things, but it's just the wind. So I apologize. Let's come back. Group three, what does their healing journey look like from here, Spirit? What does their healing journey look like from here? 
Yeah, it feels like for many of you, before we get into this, I do need to talk about this tune, Mother and Fathers. They're more focused on each other than they are on the children here. And that's what it feels like. It feels like this is an environment where you had to learn how to care for yourself. You would have gained independence from a young age. You felt like you had to spend a lot of time away from home. You may have been raised more closely with like a, a grandmother or a grandfather figure type of energy. Um, you may kind of have this weird relationship with people in authority because maybe you tried to report these issues to you know teachers or police officers or, or people who had power and instead of helping you you felt betrayed by them or you felt stuck in that system um, it feels like there is this internalization that goes on here so let's let's move forward it's as much as I want to dwell on that for you guys, but that may help you confirm whether you're in the right group or not. Um, moving forward to the Gem Oracle cards, what does Group 3's healing journey look like, Spirit? What does Group 3's healing journey look like? What does Group 3's healing journey look like? We have green fluoride coming out for you first. What does group three's healing journey look like? Yeah, we are being shown rose quartz next. We're also being shown opal and one more card. What does group three's healing journey look like? Oh, we got two, <laughs> okay. We're being shown chrysoprase and natural agate as well. Okay, so I will talk about those cards individually, but I just wanna get all of these out first lay them out bottom deck energy for you is the aquamarine we have the number four we've got the moon water element and crown chakra so wow group three Whew. what i can see here which one do i want to hold let's hold the flower agate what i can see here is following this experience which feels like happened in childhood for many of you i mean it could be a friend group for some it could be two you know stuck in between two people who were very selfishly focused on themselves and didn't weren't able to positively express love into the people around them but i'm, I'm really feeling like you were betrayed by somebody who had the authority to protect you and instead they they betrayed you, you know, they, they manipulated their power for their own personal gain because of their pride, because of their ego, because of their own fears. They left you out in the cold. Now, the green fluorite is your first period of healing. And this with the number 12, Cancer, um, the watery element and the crown chakra tells me that you and your youth are a very curious soul. You may have forged a connection to spirituality in your youth through the support of a relative. It feels like some of you may have gone into the care of a relative. This period is, is like your young mind trying to understand a, a, a feeling of higher purpose and, and higher belief. You could have been... Sorry, group three. We're just interrupted by my alarm now, would you believe? Um, you could have been very curious about spirituality from this age, group three, but I see that mostly this period was about you just having a, some safe environment around you. Um, this was about you gaining some form of emotional stability as well. And I use that word stability carefully because it doesn't, I don't mean to imply that you were unstable, but it feels like you needed to just sort of heal. You needed an immediate environment to heal. And it feels like you could have gone into the care of another relative or you could have gone into the care of, of something that was able to offer you this physical safe place to heal. And in that process, you had these big sort of retrospective questions of like, well, what is the meaning of life type of thing? Um, you had to focus on something bigger than yourself in this moment. You were taught to look at this as the bigger picture type of situation, because if you stay too focused on yourself, you may get stuck there, you know, you may never be able to get out of there. So you were taught in this period of your time to focus on something bigger than yourself. And at first, this was a healthy balance. At first, this was you kind of just trying to heal your immediate um, emotional pain. Um, but I could see how you may have gotten so distracted by the structure of this situation that you weren't able to forge really deep roots in this new form of spiritual thinking. Now, the Rose Quartz period over here, 
is um, the number 27. We have Uranus, we have a air element, and we have the root chakra. So this is where you have your opportunity to reinvent yourself. This is where your mind starts to get curious. This is where you start to look at things as, as opportunities that can that you can forge into new versions of yourself. We look at a new beginning here with the root chakra, but we also look at a period of reinvention with Uranus. So it feels like you guys may be experimenting with your looks here. It feels, feels like you guys may be moving physically. Um, this period is really about you understanding um, the world around you in a different way. And it feels like you're kind of getting to know other people in this period as well. You may be forging new friendships in this period. You may be getting to know what other people's upbringings were like or what other people have, have experienced as well. You may be learning, you know, what a normal or, or what a regular, how do I word this? Because I don't like those words either. What a healthier um, home environment looks like. And it feels like this is all sort of helping you figure out how you want to rebuild build yourself properly because in this situation you were nurtured to to do something and here we have the opportunity to be more independent we've seen more of an individual in this period the rose quartz is trying to help you understand how you want to live your life and how you want to move forward um, based on what you are seeing other people do as well it feels like you are forging friendships in this period as well strong friendships that's what the rose quartz feels like for me strong new connections in that period of your life. Now moving forward to the opal, we have the number 31, we have Saturn, we have the air element and we have the throat chakra. So the opal for me, group three, is, is indicating a long period of physical trials. So listen, this is almost a whole lifetime of healing for you, group three. The opal period is really about bringing things back and, and kind of pulling away from distractions. I feel like because we've, we're so excited about this period of reinvention, we may have gotten a bit carried away here. And the opal is, not that there's any wrong or right way to do this, but the opal is talking about us needing to be more focused and practice discernment because we're going from the number three to one, which tells me that we have too many things open. We need to keep it back here at, at one thing, focusing on just one thing and being very rigid with what we feed into this. So it feels like the opal is indicating a period of maybe distraction where we learn the hard way that we need to at least stay grounded in something. It feels like you learn some pretty difficult lessons in this period of your life, I'm not going to lie. Saturn really puts you through the rings here. Saturn's energy is very long term. Um, if we're not committed to a task, we pay for it type of energy. It's not supposed to punish us, but Saturn likes things to be structured and organized and with the throat chakra here, it feels like we're just curious sort of flighty Geminis who are just sort of putting in a bit of interest here and there and Saturn's like, stop, <laughs> you need to focus on one thing and we're just kind of going, duh, 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 duh. and Saturn's like, fine, and they just kind of rip it all apart. So it feels like a lot of things could have ended at that period of your life. We may be looking at things, um, in, uh, the hard way of learning that we need to sort of commit ourselves to something. We need to stand for something or will fall for anything type of energy here. And again, I want to say that it's not as bad as what you've already been through. This is a part of your healing. This is technically a healing lesson. This isn't a pain lesson. We're learning about a different way to heal here. Um, and in this version of healing, it teaches us to be very specific about what we are addressing. Because if we try to be too general, we kind of get carried away and then we lose progress in the sense of we're just gaining more distractions and we're not actually addressing the root of the real issues. So that opal period, it teaches us a lot about ourselves and it teaches us a lot about how we see opportunity as well. Because I feel like it, you're not really taking things seriously at that point in your life. Um, you're just kind of wanting what you think is, is normal, but there's no real attachment to those outcomes. Which is why even when they fall apart, there's a feeling of, well, it was just meant to be type of energy. Um, coming over to the chrysoprase feeling over here, we have the number 20, we have Pisces, we have the crown chakra, and we have water. So chrysoprase is interesting, group three. Chrysoprase progresses into something more connected around self. Chrysoprase indicates an ending. 
as well in order for a brand new fresh start. This period of your life is a lot of heavy introspection. We go from distracting ourselves with material things and, and accidentally forging a lot of devilish connections um, and attachments to really wanting meaning and substance and, and a deep feeling of, of purpose as well. Um, the Pisces energy on that card is almost indicating an ending or secrets as well and, and painful truths coming out at the last minute where we're having to really face the music. And I feel like this teaches us more about how our actions and our behavior is is what we learned from a young age. Like it's it's weird because there's almost a sense of peace here because you're realizing that it's not your fault. This is something that you were taught to do. And I feel like this is a process of forgiving yourself as well because I think that in the opal phase of your life you may have vicariously hurt others. You know, we were so excited to create these new strong connections that we got a bit carried away and I feel like our actions um, became hurtful towards others without meaning to, you know, without meaning to. We might look back and go, oh my gosh, I didn't realize until recently that the way that I'd been treating the people that I care about was a product of how I had been taught to treat people that I care about. And that wasn't healthy. I know that now, you know, jealousy doesn't equal love. Um, manipulating and, and being selfish to make people feel like they need to be there um, isn't love. And I feel like this period is liberating in a sense. And this may be an optimistic way of looking at it because Pisces in general is a very pessimistic energy. But um, optimistically, it's liberating because you are realizing that this pattern of behavior isn't something that you concocted. You're not evil. You're not cruel. You're still part of you is still this young child who was placed unfairly in a situation that was very selfish and that had vicariously taught you how to be a selfish person. So you don't mean to do these things. You have a good heart. You're someone who's trying. You're really trying. And you're learning in this period of your life with the Christ of Praise that you aren't a product of your environment and you have identified the way that some of these deeper, deeper issues have manifested in your behavior and in the way that you think about things and the way that you treat others as well. And you're learning over here that you want to end some of these cycles. You're learning over here how to offer yourself emotional closure too, because I think that at this point, you just want a fresh, brand new start. You just want a blank slate. You just want a brand new leap into the unknown. And you want to allow yourself the best opportunity to be this new version of yourself. And in doing that, you give yourself a lot of time out with self. You give yourself a lot of separation. And I feel like you're just wanting to, to start fresh and to start the right way this time in the sense of um, without sort of feigning that attachment. Because I think that what happened over here with the opal was about experiences with Saturn. It felt like we formed some attachments. Um, it felt like we formed some really strong bonds and it felt like it could have been codependent at times, you know, the people that we were around or the things that we were doing in our lifestyle. Um, but Chrysopraise is encouraging us to move forward with meaning, with mindfulness and with value. So it's interesting here. Some of you may be strongly connected to spirituality at that time, but not necessarily. I see that you are a spiritual person, but you're not really heavy on religion. For many of you, it's just about being connected to self. You know, that idea of practicing mindfulness, being a good person and, and expecting the same in the, in the opposite. Um, now, moving forward from Chrysoprase, we have the natural agate. The natural agate, number two, Venus, Earth, and Heart Chakra. So, depending on how long this Chrysoprase, the period or phase lasts, I see that this leads to um, a more feminine energy being able to come into your existence. So, up until now, we've very much been in recovery. We've very much been this young energy who just needs to figure out um, how to nurture and love and parent themselves in a healthy way where they're not responsible for other people except themselves. And it feels like you're just, you're in such a long period of recovery that you don't get to see these more developed, mature qualities within yourself for some time. The natural agate talks about you 
fostering more maternal instincts, more um, caring and even paternal qualities. The idea here is that there's compassion, there's kindness, there's an ability to express love without feeling as though it can be twisted against you, without feeling as though somebody is going to take that and turn it into a weakness and show you that love is never a strength. So it feels like this long period of healing leads you into this period of, of using love and feeling love and being able to express love in a healthy way where you are seeing it as a strength and more than that as a life force. Natural Agate talks about having a firm foundation of self-love before you step into other connections and commitments, being very in tune with your heart chakra energy and coming from a sense, a strong sense of self um, before associating yourself with others. So it feels like we are finally able to express this more caring and nurturing aspect and it comes from us taking time out to be introspective and to really delve into how we had been conditioned to act and how our environment when we were younger taught us how to react and behave in order to protect ourselves and in order to not appear weak. We're destroying some of those beliefs and patterns in order to create a stronger, more nurturing, um, loving environment for ourselves and for those we care about. So let's get some more Oracle cards to clarify each of these cards. We're going to start with green fluorite. Group three, please, Spirit, can we clarify the green fluorite healing period? We have two cards. You guys got a lot of cards. With the animal, yes, it's all about going back to your instincts here. Some of you guys are literally just following orders at this point in your life. You're just feeling like it's very instinctual. Um, this is just kind of what I'm meant to do at this moment. Um, this is what I feel guided to do at this moment. And we also have the shaman. So you could be learning from somebody else. You could be being taught from somebody else. You could be being raised by someone who does have a strong connection to spirituality or, or some sort of faith or some sort of strong set of values and ideas and you're kind of learning from them. Um, but I see you kind of just learning in a sense of you're not very, you're not really absorbing it. There's something very instinctual about this, very primitive about this. It's not something that you want to personally adopt, but you can appreciate um, the care behind it. Let's have a look at your rose quartz moment in your healing journey. What else can you tell us? The desert, yeah. So this is a new environment, going from something barren into something new. And it feels like we have to almost create things here, especially with Uranus. It feels like this is so fresh that we kind of don't know what to make of it in the beginning. We want to create things to fill the void, but we're also just appreciating the fact that we have room to create in the first place. It's kind of when you go from complete chaos to complete still, and there's almost that impulse to, you know, self-sabotage and create chaos just to fill the silence. But if you're able to sit there for long enough, it's, it's the most profoundly peaceful moment that you may ever experience. And that's what it feels like here. When you're finally able to be in this desert, it feels like you're going from, you know, this chaotic ice storm, blizzard, snowstorm to the desert. And it's kind of like, oh, wow, <laughs> it's actually nice. And somebody else might go there and like, be like, why didn't you turn the aircon on? It's really hot in here. And where, where's all the furniture? <laughs> like, what are you doing? And I feel that for you, this unaccommodating environment is a massive process of reinvention when you're able to start fresh and really go from the ground up into something that feels um, exciting for yourself. Now, what about opal here? What happens with opal spirit? What other energies do you have about the opal? We're being shown the mother reverse. Yeah, I feel like, listen, this period of your life does re-trigger um, some of these toxic sort of feminine energies of, of smothering, perhaps, or just really feeling like you need to be... Um, Oh, yeah, it could be smothering. It could be smothering. I'm getting smothering energy here with opal. Oh, God, I'm just seeing a snake wrap around someone. And that's because of this imagery. We have a lot of snakes here in these two decks. Both of these mothers have a snake in them. And the snake is like coddling the eggs. So there's a smothering period of your life here with the opal where um, we're kind of being shown again what not to do 
in these situations, except it's us exhibiting those behaviors this time. And it's not leading to as worse as it did in the past, but the lessons are still there. There's still repercussions for those actions that we've taken. And it shocks us enough to show us that, wow, I don't want to be the person that I hate, or excuse me for using that word. I don't want to be the person that, that hurt me. Um, so we we kind of yeah we're taught we're showing ourselves exactly what not to do in a situation with that opal moment so what about chrysoprase spirit what happens in the chrysoprase phase of group three's healing journey we're looking at the judge here they're showing me the judge and the vision and the temple but i'll only take the judge so the judge is really telling me with the Christ of praise here that you are starting to pass judgment over yourself. You're starting to allow yourself to look within and to take this seriously. And it leads to a pessimistic attitude at first. It leads to you really needing to take accountability and responsibility in a way that it is confronting. Um, it's not something that you could have done when you were younger because it's just an overwhelming sense of responsibility. It happens later in life when you're better equipped and when you're better able to understand how resilient you are when it comes to coping with these things. You're able to look at yourself as a separate entity from this so that whatever happens, you're able to change it and you know that it's not going to happen again in future. You're not um, no longer associating yourself with this as like a chained system that you're stuck in. You're seeing yourself as a separate chain link who has the opportunity to create other chain links and to move forward in a healthy way. The judge tells me that you may be using your experiences to help guide other people and to help direct other people in life as well. But at this point in your life, it feels like more than anything, you're looking at things very objectively and you're starting to see things clearly, black and white good and bad, what you do want to do and what you don't want to do. And the vision tells me that things start to become very clearly in terms of how your future and, and that you can heal in a, um, a more fulfilling, healthier way, um, in a way that isn't filled with distractions, in a way that doesn't offer smothering techniques so that you don't lose the people that you care about, and in a way where you don't have to be without in order to appreciate what you once had, for example. Um, let's move forward to the natural agate, please, Spirit. What else is that card trying to tell group three? We have the bridge, yeah. So the natural agate is a period of bridging something that you never thought you could have. It's a beautiful opportunity of moving forward into a new direction. Um, collaborating with someone, might I add. This could be when you have that serious, serious partner in your life who you realize that you wouldn't have met had you not experienced all of this. It feels like this is us forging new opportunities for ourselves that we may have never imagined, you know. At one point in our life, we could have never imagined crossing paths with this beautiful opportunity over here that is now such a strong foundation in our life. And the bridge really talks about um, synogamy in the sense of two things sort of needing to happen, you know, this is the start of the bridge and the end of the bridge. If that isn't there, this can't succeed. And it helps create this this um, even flow. So I feel like there is a strong partnership being forged in that period of your journey. There is a strong alliance, a strong connection of compassion and kindness and love. Strong, strong, open, consistent energy here. And we also have the healer as your bottom deck energy. So your healing journey does seem to help you um, offer healing to others. That seems to be the purpose here. Um, your healing journey is a lengthy one, group threes, because it feels like your issues start younger, very, very young for some of you, and it involves a lifetime of you just wanting to be the child that you never got the chance to be, you know? And the, the things that you learn along the way teach you that you're, you're never ever going to be back there. Um, but it does seem to be about you needing to to learn all the different parts of growing up um, at later in life. So let's use some gem oracle cards and some beautiful shine your light cards to get any more information about your healing journey. Group three, what other information can you offer them? Okay. We'll also get this deck. What other information can you offer group three? Okay. <laughs> Bottom deck energy is get back to nature and reconnect to your hippie roots. Yeah, I'm hearing keep it simple, sweets. Let's say that. I don't want to say the other word. Keep it simple, sweets. 
Um, we also have believe in yourself, unleash your inner unicorn. Yes, that Aquarius Uranus reinvention energy of finding yourself, discovering yourself, knowing what works best for you as well, because you were kind of taught to do one thing here, which works for that person. But you find out later in life that there are many other ways to heal and to grow and to be healthy. And you're finding what is your version of healthy. We have stop judging and start loving. Isn't that interesting? Because it does feel like we kind of hit a period of wanting to blame other people in this Christ of praise energy. Um, and it takes us a while to realize that um, we're only ever responsible for ourselves. And we have to leave that room to, for other people to accept responsibility and accountability as well. You seem to be someone who from Christ of Praise develops your loving abilities by knowing that you're only ever responsible for you and you have this strong connection to self after that. You seem to really want to take your your journey by the horns and, and really embody that um, new ending in order for your new beginning so that you can have this strong partnership over here eventually. Now we also have from this deck, your bottom deck energy is we attract what we are, therefore dreaming is a journey within, what inner beliefs are still restricting you, putting you down and making excuses that hold you back from your dreams. And that's what the opal part of your healing journey feels like. It feels like that sort of university college period in people's lives where you kind of meet a bunch of new people and you get really attached to them and you get attached to the lifestyle and you try things for the first time and you get attached to those and you don't realize how addictive your personality is until suddenly you have all these new addictions and you kind of learn through those experiences that one, um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, but also two, you have to use discernment and you have to be mindful of, of what you do feed your energy into. Um, and I feel like that period of your life is filled with a lot of distractions that eventually show you exactly what matters to you and what you want to focus your energy in. And what really matters is mindfulness for you and, and going within and having strong connections and having deep and meaningful conversations and really connecting to a person on a soul level, not just on like how many drinks can they shove down their throat in 30 seconds. We have, even though your dream isn't possible right now, could you give it the chance to come true in the future? Wow. So these are affirmations that could be helpful for you in your dreaming journey. So isn't that interesting? Because I was saying that it's a very long journey for you guys. If you could create anything you wanted, what would it be? Journal or sketch your creations on paper. Start to believe you have limitless possibilities to create in this world. And that's you in that Daughter of Swords energy, getting curious about life again, opening your mind to your opportunities. Now, I want to say with the Opal, as distracting as it is, it's just still a super exciting and fun part of your life that is almost a birthright. You know, like it's like college, like university. Yes, you get a little bit off the rails, but it's still a fun experience that most of us wouldn't change. You know, if, if we have a lot of close calls in those periods of our lives. We come very close to death in those periods of our lives, but it teaches us a lot about ourselves and about the world around us and about what we really want. And there's some experiences there that you are going to value and, and share with your own um, family when you get older as well. So we have, you can't force your dreams to come true. Dreams can only be blown into the wind like feathers, after which we need to learn to trust, to be patient and wait with our hearts open. Every day is a possibility for change. So group three, that's what I have for you. That's been your healing journey reading, looking at um, from the start to your moment of peace and connection to self and strength and feeling as though you've, you've come as far as you need to in terms of focusing on what you don't have. Um, I see a beautiful shift here of creating a strong partnership as well. Um, I hope this reading was helpful. I don't doubt that it could have been triggering. I do recommend that you take some time out with yourself, just taking mindful moments to reconnect and really think about the things that did trigger you too, so that we're not letting them fester into something that they weren't meant to be. Um, if you're interested in the giveaway, all the information is down below and you're welcome to have a look at Donna's channel now if you've come to me first or if you're coming from Donna. I hope that this video complimented her reading. I've got to say that little spiel, you guys. If it doesn't resonate, don't force it to fit. Don't let it take from you. Thank you for being here and I shall see you in another video. Bye.